Well, good evening. I am so glad that you decided to listen to this message. Uh, you know, I'm still on my preludes. I missed you on Monday night. I really, really did. We're supposed to have on Monday night uh, one of our Sir Victors to tell her story. As you know about, I have been kind of letting everybody know that she's going to be on there to share her story about, you know, the horrific issues that are going on today in regards to sexual violence, you know, with her father incesting her. And she's very, you know, she bore a baby by him. But bless God, the Lord has really blessed her, and she has been a great impact, um, you know, helping so many people who have been there before. But listen to me. I want to say thank you for those who have been really, really, you know, taking their time out to listen to these messages, and I pray the Lord has blessed you. Some has um, emailed me and told me the Lord has blessed them, and some, you know, by passing, maybe in a store or whatever, they've been telling me they've been tuning in. And so I just bless God and give him all the glory. And I want to make sure that if you would please do your very best to, you know, kind of pray and seek God about who you believe that, you know, these messages, you can actually go on and sign on as far as following me on my YouTube channel. Um, it's listed under Sessions, the number two real sessions with an S, plural, the number two real. And uh, just um, subscribe. You know, I don't usually say that. I guess got to go, oh, well, who get it, who get it. But I'm just telling you to subscribe because there's much, much more coming in 2018 that you do not want to miss out on. And so with that said, I want to do this shout-out. I want to say thank you for those who did, you know, forward the messages or forwarded the flyer. Thank you. I really do appreciate that and sharing the information. Even if you preached it, to God be the glory. I just want to make sure that our daddy God uh, was being heard through the vessels that came through and that have been speaking for these last three months in our prep 2018. I believe in obeying our daddy, so uh, I believe in whoever gets the information will get it. But our prep 2018, for those that are listening for the first time, we're covering the season of the manifest exploits, changing and strengthening of the guards. Now, I've got some notes here that I want to carry out in just a few minutes. So please, if you're listening to this right now from the very beginning, whatever you do, you can fast forward, but you do want to hear this message that I'm talking about tonight out of these five C's as I'm talking about these false positive gifts. And, uh, you know, and, and the Lord was ministering me today all day long. I just kind of meditated on what is this C, Daddy? So I didn't get the chance to have her on. I figured I'd have time to get the next C done before our next speaker come up on December the 11th. And so, but this C here, it really, really touched my heart because of some things that I've been really watching in the spirit as it relates to warfare and worship. And it is carnality, the gateways. And so I want to talk about that. Uh, there must be uh, some shifting and transitioning. Um, when I say shift, I mean I'm talking about getting those people who, uh, we know that need to be changed and are strengthened in position. So anyway, just wanted to share about this number four um, uh, false positive prelude, uh, talking about carnality, this gateway. There are some gateways, and I want to share as I go on about the warfare and the worship part of the Reformation that needs to take place. And so my shout-out I want to give real quick is to Apostle Sydney Gardner, who really was a blessing, along with Dr. Pastor um, uh, Tabitha Witten and, and um, Apostle Dr. Joshua Mitchell and um, Apostle Dr. Um, I can't remember his name. It's a shame he was our last speaker, uh, Dr. Um, Jim uh, Landry. I don't know why I've got a blank there, Dr. Jim Landry. And um, he, all of these were just so dynamic. If you want to go back, please go to my page. You want to listen to these messages or go to my Facebook page and listen to the messages. God's really, really speaking to them. And I want to shout out to you all. let you know how much you bless me. And definitely got something coming up for you all a little bit later on uh, for being a blessing to this ministry and the lives that God has allowed you to impact through your messages was truly very, very uh, apostolic and prophetically driven.
for such a time as this. And so upcoming this Monday on uh, December the 11th, we'll have Pastor Barrett Weddle, um, and he's going to be there at 9 o'clock as Norm, and he's with the Life Center Church. So you don't want to miss him. I know he is a dynamic teacher, and he's going to have some true rhema message for you to hear concerning our preparing before 2018. And I just want to say this. As we prepare to hear this message, I want you to please just kind of hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying concerning where we are in this vein, in this gateway, uh, because this is the thing that has, I think has really, really tainted the body of Christ and has tainted many of those who are in leadership who have fallen uh, to cause the church to not be able to move in the fashion that they need to um, as far as warfare is concerned and for God to really be glorified in the atmosphere. And so let me see, i got my notes I want to see what else am I leaving out. On number five, hopefully I'll be able to get that uh, before um, Dr. Barry comes on. If not, you will get it maybe after. But I do want you all to watch. Uh, I'll be teaching on a specific area that God has put in my heart for us to really, really pay attention to. I think I've mentioned it already in regards to adoration, but I want don't want to forget this part. I want to make sure that you watch for um, Minister Maya Bello, the one who I said did not make it on this Monday night. Um, and so she's going to be on the 17th is what her goal is on a Sunday evening. So please uh, mark your calendar for the 17th. I think that's when that is uh, on a Sunday evening. Amen. So anyway, let me just go ahead on and get started by praying. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your Holy Spirit of truth. I thank you for the anointing, Father, the breaker. I thank you for the anointing of the healer, God. I thank you, Father, that you said in your word according to Isaiah 55, God, if we seek you while he may be found. Lord God, you said that we can call on you while you're near and that we can let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts and that we can let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. That you will, Daddy. And so, Father, we're thanking you in advance right now that you have pardoned our sins for those who have heartily uh, repented as we come today, asking for your mercy and your forgiveness, Father. I'm praying that you will continue to touch me and show me what you would have me to say prophetically. And I'm thanking you, Lord God, that in Jesus' name that today, Father, that you are looking down our Sunday from heaven on the sons of men to see if there be any who understand and who seek you. Thank you so much that you have anointed those that are listening with their ears to hear and their ears to see and their eyes to see and their ears to hear in the spirit in Jesus name. Amen. Well, I may sound a little congested and it could be that I am. I don't know, but I mind that even now I just ask God to continue to help me to recognize whatever the hell is going on so that I can pull it down and decree the power of the blood over the situation. And so I want to jump right into the message to talk about this subject. But such a time as this, many of the people who we have in a warfare position and or in a worship uh, place, uh, we need to understand that there must be a reformation. For such a time as this, the Lord, as he began to talk to me about the change and the strengthening of the guards, there must be a reformation. There must be a preparation. This is why he said we need to prepare. We need to separate. That means we've got to identify these and make sure that we prepare and separate. Too often we have allowed people under conditions to be able to be in places that we have a need for. And this has really, really tainted the church. This has really put us in this place of carnality uh, with people who are not really, I'm saying really, really have been converted. We have people that we believe that, you know, they have talked to us, they have said and been there and have proven that they are going to be obedient, but they have not been truly converted. They have only given the right hand of fellowship. They've only come to church and they've been obedient to that. But their flesh has not truly been converted, has not truly died. And this is the reason why the Lord wants me to talk about this now, this see here tonight, carnality. There is 
a gateway. And I want to talk about those gateways briefly, but let me slow down to kind of give a couple of definitions for those that are on the call uh, that needs more clarity about what do I mean by cardinality, because a lot of us who think that we're something when we're not anything, when we think that we're all anointed and all oiled up and we believe that there's nothing wrong with us and that we've got so many scriptures and intellectuality in our head that there's nothing wrong with us, that we don't have any problems. But we've got to remember that we constantly strive to perfection. This is what God would have us to do when we are being able to identify those things that are weak in our lives. And so that's why I want to talk about when he's given me on the issue of cornality, these gateways as far as warfare and worship, I'm sorry, warfare and worship is concerned. And hopefully I can hurry up and get off here as I share a couple of things that we've got to recognize as we look at uh, these that have come or have been obedient to serve or that we've identified that have a gift that may be false positive. When I say that, I mean maybe false positive in regards to carnality, which means that they look or talk spiritual, but carnality is resting in the soulish realm. Now, let's look here. Carnality is defined as pertaining to or characterized by the flesh or the body. That means it's passions. Oh, I'll get on that in a few minutes. And the appetites, i get on that in a few minutes. But the sensual part and those carnal pleasures or those things that we, how do you say that so easy to beset us, uh, those things that are not spiritual, more uh, better way to put it, those things that just, come on, let's keep it real, those things that just more humanly, fleshly, worldly, uh, things that are more secular, uh, these things that are carnal versus spiritual. That means the things that we've seen, the things that we have understood, uh, we have never really gotten any true, uh, how to say, baptism in the Holy Spirit so that our souls know how to war against the carnal things that so easily beset us. Now, when I say gateway, what I mean by gateway, we know that in our soulish realm, if we have not shut those gates, if we have not allowed the Lord to truly come in and convert our souls, that means our souls now, you know, it says it rejects the old carnal way, the old fleshly passions or those things that we have these sensual appetites for. That means now those gates that lead to those things are our uh, thoughts that lead to those things because we'll start to do those because they beset us. And I'll talk about that as I said a few minutes. So that opening, it can be closed. It's an opening area that can be closed by a gate. And so what that means is that there is an access or there is an entry place. And if you think about what I'm trying to get you to to see here, when we are in warfare, those things that we have cornered, that we sometimes allow to become a stronghold in our lives, that we think that we have under control, the gatekeeper of that soulish secret, what that gatekeeper does is say, nobody knows or they don't realize that I'm struggling with this. So, but when you call yourself trying to war against the gatekeeper, when you know this is one of these sensual, these carnal appetites that you know that you visit every now and then, that gatekeeper already knows that you ain't taking no power to war against it. So it swings back and forth. So there is an access, I Sunday, there is an access for it to come in and out based on where you are carnally in your appetites or your carnality of your flesh, these passions, these weak places. That's why it swings back and forth. And when you conquer one gate, my God, then it sends another devil or another stronghold that piggybacks that one to now access the gateway so that you can try to guard. It guards that hill so you will not go and be able to conquer it. So every time you conquer one, this is why we have to be fully endowed. You better hear me. To be able to truly uh, come out of carnality into true divine spirituality of our soul so that we can truly truly offer our lives a living sacrifice so every time the devil come, we can 
you know, we can know within ourselves that we can tell you, get thee behind me. There's nothing that the devil can find. There's nothing the devil can use. You know, you're going to expose the devil. The devil can expose you. You're going to confess. You're going to repent for real. That means you ain't going back to that moment. Mm, I know I'm talking to somebody. And so I'm going to be kind of quieter today, I pray, because when I start to think about this gateway, <laughs> uh, that I've been fighting and winning the war, I'm going to make sure I pronounce that. But there is a reformation that we got to understand for this 2018. There's a reformation. And this reformation, oh, Lord, I misplaced my, my uh, timer here. I always do that because I don't know I'll be gone on, gone on. But uh, let me see if I can find the timer. But anyway, um, I don't know where to say. But anyway, this reformation part of it is very, very important. Because what happens in reformation, if you look at Hebrews chapter 9, Verse 10, it's sort of like, a, uh, a, how to say, it gives more like a overview or a, a example when we're talking about the Old and the New Testament times. But in this particular word that you see here as it relates to reformation, what it means is that, and that's why I put that there, this there is a warning that I am here to let you know that if we don't begin now looking at the worship place and looking at the carnality for those that are at the gate, those that are watching at the gate, those who are in, on intercessory prayer teams, those who are saying that they're watch, warriors and watchmen on the wall, when actuality, gateways of flesh, carnality is on display. And you can't even see it, leader. You can't even see it because they look or they're there at the gate. They're chiming. They're on time. They're doing what they need to do. But in Hebrews 9 and 10, when we look at this, is the only places we look at this translation of this word, reformation, as we look at it in the Greek, what that means is to make it straight. And we've got to look at what are we doing to straighten out the carnality that we have allowed to come inside our church houses and perform and or to pretend to be in worship. Now, this is very, very serious. This is a warning. See, and I'm trying to calm it down because I want to talk about what happened that the enemy tried me, but in actuality, many of us are saying the enemy is trying us, but I saw that I allowed the enemy to try. So a lot of this stuff ain't the devil. We need to quit giving the devil credit about stuff that we actually had these gateways or this weak place or these appetites about things that we want to do anyway, okay? And so that was some things that I was facing, I was, in, I was doing a bunch of things, and as I said, in here working in the house, and all of a sudden, I got really hungry. Y'all already know where I'm going with this. But when I looked at the thing that was crooked in me, I already knew it was about the cookies. I already knew it was about the salts. I already knew it was about the sugars. We just bought these things. And so as I began to uh, think on this, and looking at, you know, where I was and those things that I know that need to be straightened out, uh, that's what this reformation I'm talking about that means. It means we need to straighten out this thing that uh, that's normally crooked, that we know we need to get this thing that's been bent and crooked. That's what iniquity is. Iniquity is something bent and crooked that we just keep on letting it have its place. And that's that thing that's so easily beset us. And we've got to look at the restoration part of this. This is the reason why we're doing Prep 2018. We can't take it in 2018 with us. This is the reason why I say this every year, but I'm already working on my strategy to kill hell in these areas, and we are way late. We are going to fight hell until we leave here. But the principle is, is are you really, really at the gateways of that hell and addressing it and confronting it for real? And so when we look at it, this, this, uh, this crooked place in this passage, it's talking about setting the things right. Making the things right. Now, one of the things I, uh, uh, you know, regardless of where we're looking back in Scripture or not on it, but the main thing, uh, types and shadow of Old and New Testament is very important. We can't throw them out. But what we have to do is look at where we are now in this Reformation so that we can make those things that, uh, that is in this dispensation, so that we can make those things that are crooked straight, those things that are carnal 
spiritual. And so we can quit doing religiosity and make sure that we rectify. That means if we're going to rectify these things, what I'm talking about now, we set them straight. That means we're going to do our very best because we're never going to be 100. We're going to do our very best to seek those areas that are weak to purify them, especially those things that we're repeatedly doing, those things that we're repeatedly allowing to uh, have gateways or be mixed in uh, at a holy place. And so that means we've got to learn how to separate. We've got to make sure that we look at what's in here, what's connected, what have I tolerated, what have I uh, agreed with or compromised with that is no longer working toward the good, is no longer seeking perfection, is no longer uh, being corrected, is no longer uh, trying to make the crooked straight, trying to remove the errors. I am just being real. We are in a place right now that we have repeatedly allow things to gel together for whatever conditional reason, and it's way too late for that. Now, when, it is too late. And so when we look at the carnality, the Bible tells us in Romans 6 and 7 that the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. And so this is why a lot of places don't have the atmosphere of peace. Anybody that can see in the spirit would be able to walk in an atmosphere and determine where there's, there's not true spirit of life and where there's not true peace of God. Verse 7 says that the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's laws, nor can it do so. Now, when I began to think about where I was in this place uh, on yesterday when I was on Sunday night, when I was really, really trying to prepare for some things and straightening up here in, in my place, I began to, like I said, start to eat some things. And, you know, you know how we do, we throw things in our mouth. And now I'm not thinking, again, like I said, we can't blame it on the devil because I already know better. I already know the state I am where I'm fighting blood pressure, okay? I already know because I done got to the point, I'm just going to eat these things that I know taste good, taste salty, taste sweet, taste real, real good. But what I did was I didn't ration, okay? It's not that wrong. We can have some pleasures like this. We've got to make sure we watch when we're doing this thing so it won't destroy the temple where our daddy God's supposed to reside and rule and super rule for supernatural. And so when I got ready to think about this thing, by then it was too late. I wasn't thinking no more. I went to bed. Could not go to sleep. Stayed up all night long. And what the Lord showed me is that I began to get very uh, slumbered but couldn't sleep. Okay, couldn't focus. My head was just like it want to pop open. There was so much pain. That didn't think about blood pressure. You know, we can get so busy doing stuff, and there's no power. There's no revelation. Nothing can happen because now I'm in a slumber state where my blood pressure went up. I don't realize this. Now I'm slowful and slack. Now all three of these types of uh, spiritual reactions to what I've done, to these gateways I've allowed in of nothing but greed and, and, and gluttony. We won't call what it is, and the devil ain't had nothing to do with it. It was what I did because I wasn't paying attention. See, that's what the devil want to do. He wants to not pay attention to these gateways. And this is what has happened. People can sing real good. They can dance, praise dance. They say praise dance. And I call it performances. And, you know, and all this stuff. we got to pay attention. We don't have those who are truly anointed and truly are giving glory to God and not their flesh. And so in my situation, my warfare lacked supernatural power and authority. When I wanted to get up, when I wanted to fight, when I wanted to pray, I couldn't. My head was killing me. So these eating habits, we got to look at the enemy is using these gateways so those who are truly packing power, those who are truly can warfare, we're, you know, we, we're dealing with all these cold, we're dealing with all these blood pressure issues, we're dealing with a little of everything you can name. The devil is trying to fight us. But the thing is, is that a whole lot of warfare, we can come against if we try to pay attention to the gateway. Now, some of these things may not be uh, us, it just may be some things that are in the atmosphere or whatever. But my warfare, I knew what it was. I opened the gate, okay? And so this bad eating, uh, this disobedience to the bad eating, uh, these sugars and all these things. And one thing I remember, I was telling somebody what the Lord has spoke to me, and I'm going to get on this rest of this lesson. And I know this, you need to hear me when I'm saying you because it's a gateway. 
The Lord said to me when I was at the counter getting something to drink, uh, trying to deal with the headache, and he said, you must understand. He said, you've got to accept it, my daughter, that you can no longer eat this way. It's too risky with the bad preservatives and salts and sugars and these substitutes in this food today. And after all, you're not young like you used to. Things are not made the way they used to. You can no longer. you got to accept it that you can't continue in this way and expect me to use you. I was like, oh, my God. All I can say is, I repent, Daddy. Forgive me. Thank you for sustaining me that I didn't have a stroke or anything else. My blood pressure was almost 200 over 100 and so. But he sustained me. But let me tell you something. I opened the gate. You that are leaders, you that are uh, midwives and pastors and mentors, there's many gateways that we have opened while we're trying to get somebody out of something or taking somebody into something. we got to look at what gateways we got open before we can try to do anything with anybody else because of the carnality of the gateways that we've allowed open. Now, as our text that I talked about, according to Revelation 3 and 2, we got to wake up. Many of us are too sleep, too sleep to not even recognize that a lot of the people who God has put to our hands, many of these people are in the middle of heaven and flesh. They're very carnal. They have a lot of uh, fleshy strongholds that they have never dealt with, and many of you that do know they have them, you have not counseled them to get to, uh, help them break free through deliverance or counseling or whatever need to be so that you can be real, real, real with them and let them know what you see. You know, what as good as it is that you can lead someone that you can't counsel them? They've got to recognize, they've got to identify these strongholds. They've got to look at this vain worship that they're doing. They've got to look at this fleshly singing and praise dancing. That's really not praise dancing. I call this flesh dancing or performances. We've got to get ourselves together so we can look at where are the carnality gateways that's keeping us from being able to do true warfare and that the ushering of the Holy Spirit can be present and that he would visit us and that he would rest in the atmosphere. And Revelation 3 and 2 tells us, unless we wake up and strengthen what remains, that you already see is about to die. Many things have already died because there's no supernatural. There's no conviction of the carnality. He said, but I, for I have not found your works complete. And that means it's not finished. It's not in the state that it should be in the sight of God. And so these are the things that the Bible is reminding us of. He's trying to give us this warning. Verse 3 says, remember then, what you received and you heard. Many of us know the truth, but we won't exercise. We won't confront the thing that we already know that we allow gateways to swing back and forth, open in our ministries and our churches. So, <clears throat> so we've got to remember then what you receive and heard, and you've got to keep it, and you've got to repent. And I'm saying it right now, this is a warning. We've got to repent and confront. Say it after me. I'm going to repent, and I'm going to confront. I'm going to repent, and I'm going to confront, and I'm going to shut the gateways. Why? Because it goes on to say, if you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Now, <laughs> I want to get into talking a little bit about those supernatural things that the natural person does not know according to 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. You know, and so if we can't think in this uh, realm to understand the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, so therefore they're going to always have a justification why they do what they do or you don't understand me. They think it's foolishness. So they're not able to comprehend these things. They're not able to discern these things. We might as well face it. Matthew 11, 12 is telling us over and over again it's already been proven. We've got people coming to the church, shooting and everything else and killing up the saints. For the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violence has to take it by force. Why? Because we've got to look constantly in the spirit. Our weapons are not going to be carnal. Our warfare are not carnal. So we can't fight spiritual matters with carnality. Our weapons are going to have to be spiritual. You're going to have to have Holy Spirit to fight and to lead you. 
and to be able to be bold enough to confront the gateways that are resting in your church, in your sanctuaries, in your prayer teams. This reformation has to come before 2018. Matter of fact, it is your responsibility now, because you heard this, is to act now. Okay, because what you've heard, he said already, you know not the hour that I'm coming. This carnality they have to be recognized, reformed quickly. This is a warning. In order for us to be able to take the power we need, we're going to have to be bold and confront. Because hell ain't playing with us. And so we've got to recognize in order for us to be able to uh, address those people, because none of us are perfect, and you know Galatians chapter 6 tells us that, and none of us are perfect. So we've got to make sure that we recognize those things that are giving us a hard time, and all those things that we're being challenged with because the person wants to be in between and mean they want to be in the middle. And so you know that's lukewarm. So are you going to be a middle church? Packing carnality and allowing gateways to come in. There's no spiritual warfare that you can win. You wonder why things are constantly happening. You wonder why, you know, the worship teams are, you know, that they, they have a bunch of problems because there's some carnality in the mix. We've got to make sure that you're paying attention to see what gateways are open. I've seen this. I've lived this. I was in prayer teams. I was in the choir. And coming in and getting into the choir, you know, hanging over with alcohol all night long, the been sex up all night long, you know, and, 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 and still hanging over from being drunk. You know, we, we, we know that people are coming to the church and probably they get the deliverance. But where is the eye of the seer to the leader to be able to say, Dr. Murphy, I ain't going to say Dr. Murphy back then. I definitely wasn't that. But, Sandy, I need you to meet me at the church. And I don't want you to sing today. We'll talk about it later on at the church. I'll talk to you. You already know what it is. If they can see real good. So my thing is that the thing is that we've got to make sure that we're bold enough to be able to make sure that they're not doing things or allowing them to be or play organs and doing things when we know a whole bunch of them are dealing with identity crisis. A whole bunch of them are dealing with gender identity issues. But yet we want to use them because they can sing good or they can play the organ good or whatever. Come on now. These are gateways that Abba is holding us accountable for. And you just, I just read the scripture to you. We've got to strengthen that thing that remains. And so what is now is accountable for us to make sure we have accountability right now, right now to make sure that we're looking at where these things that we know that are gateways that's preventing us to warfare effectively and or have worship where Abba will rest in the atmosphere. That's the reformation needs to take place. So let me go and jump into this real quick so I can get out of here. If y'all don't want to miss on the 18th as well, you don't want to miss Apostle uh, Baker. He's going to be, my God, I went to his church this past Sunday, and, Lord, he was just all in my house, in my juice, in my Kool-Aid, uh, my message that the Lord was ministering to me about to be able to bring in regard to several different things that's coming up. So, but you definitely want to hear him on the 18th. He's going to close our message out on the uh, prep 2018. I'm so appreciative to all the speakers. We've got something juicy for you all um, at the end. But anyway, let's look at this issue that some of the things that we got to look at these gateways, okay? Because some of the things I'm, I, I have been praying about as I've been into some atmospheres, I've, I've noticed that uh, some of the people who uh, a lot of times we believe that are really, really flowing in Holy Spirit, uh, because some of the people are not, I don't know if it's that they're not praying or the leaders are just too common with them or what, when they cannot see that clearly this person is being challenged with a stronghold. I can see it real clear. If someone is up singing, I can see whether or not if they're dating, if they're having sex. Uh, I can see it really clear that it's something, and Holy Ghost will minister to me that this person is struggling. I, this is the thing that we got to know. Come on now. This is the hour that we got to look at the false positive. This is the reason why we can't have the flow and the true move of Holy Spirit. We got to quit, like I said, Continue to use people. I'd rather have uh, two or three people who have sold out to God than a whole seven, eight, a hundred of them in there with a whole bunch of uh, gateways open. That's carnal. Lord, help us out. You see, I'm trying to stay calm because I'm still being challenged. <laughs> Della crazy because he's thinking that I'm not going to be able to get this message out. 
And I know that because I've been obedient today. I'm doing everything and throwing out things, making sure I have no more access <laughs> to these cookies and things. But anyway, uh, here we are, Romans 8, 9, 11 says, 9 through 11 says, I'm just giving you in plain English, it says, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh. We cannot flow in that, okay? But we are in the realm of the spirit. So if indeed the spirit of God lives in us, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ, okay? They are of the world. They are carnal because they choose to be in the middle. He said, I will spew you out of my mouth if you look warm. It goes on to say, but if Christ is in you, that means he's living in you, he's overtaking you, he's consumed you. This is something that we need to be able to pray before 2018 for the endowment of Holy Spirit to be much greater in us. You say, well, how can he get greater? Because he is great. Well, that means you want uh, an increase. Uh, how to say, a download of more of the anointing, a fresh anointing, so that you can be strengthened in the things of God, so you can be packing more power from the things that tried to attack us over the years and or even in the time that you are working in the ministry. It goes on to say, and then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. There it is. And the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. And so in accordance to someone that we've allowed to work in ministry, even serve us or armor bear us or whatever, we got to look at the fact that we don't want to be a castaway in the very thing that we're praying against. Here we are, we're allowing to happen. And so we got to uh, avoid uh, these areas that we tend to not want to correct because we don't want people to go away or we don't feel like we want to wound them. Well, we got a lot of beatings from our mamas and our dads when we were coming up and a whole bunch of you. I hope you ain't hating your parents. But we honor our parents because they was only trying to get us straight, okay? They're only trying to move the error. They're only trying to correct the bent of the hell that we continue to allow the gateways to overtake us with. And those that may not even how they say was saved, but they didn't want you hurt. They didn't want you to see that you go through what they went through. So that's what parents do in the spirit. So sons and daughters should be open to correction because these are our spiritual parents. These are our mentors. These are the people who are trying to birth us through the ministry. But isn't it amazing that you would want them to birth you out and to get you to where you need to be, but you don't want them to correct you? You don't want them to rebuke you? You don't want to get them to give you personal direction. You don't want them to pray for you or lay hands on you. But you're always saying you want the impartation. You want the ministry. You want to move in Florida. And I know God called me. And I know God connected me with you. But when they start to correct that hell, I don't want to preach. God help me. But when they start trying to correct that hell that's in us, then now we got an attitude. Now we got a, a, I say, a boggling head or throwing our hands up or talking and backbiting that leader. Let me tell you right now, God is not playing. A whole bunch of people ain't making it out really quick. Like it used to be grace. It ain't gracing like that no more. We're going to have to watch our mouths. We're going to have to watch our ways. We're going to have to watch to see what gateways we're allowing to come open that we know we have never, ever shut, that we've allowed to open and swing back and forth as these spirits assign other carnal uh, spirits to come in and take charge over the places that, you know, they go, oh, well, I got to step this lie up, okay, because now they done found out that I do this and that. So now I got the demon go, well, or the spirit that, that's trying to attack you in the corner way, say, well, you better do this shit now because they see this about you. So now you done open another gateway. So now the stronghold are now attacked in another kind of way. You need deliverance. You need to go through and somebody lay somebody hands, somebody lay hands on you who's blood about, who ain't playing with the devil or get you some sound counsel so these spirits can come up and you don't return back to them. You will not be able to effectively warfare, there, and you truly will not be worshiping God. You're worshiping your flesh. Don't want to preach. And so we got to look at uh, those that are leading. we got to look at how to facilitate the movement of the Holy Spirit. we got to start getting these people prepared who really want God, who really love God, who really want to renew, them, renew their souls back to the Lord for these gateways they've opened up. And right now, we need to start asking people, do you want to be rebaptized? 
that might need to happen. You know, get baptized again. I know I, I think about doing that to my, my, uh, my, uh, my siblings and people like that who really want to turn, turn their life over. Let's baptize some of our family members before 2018. Let's start getting them, you know, to, to prepare to know about God. Don't start baptizing people that don't even know who Jesus is. Don't do that. You know, start preparing little lessons at home so they can get to know who Jesus is. And then set a date. You know, uh, set a date in 2018 you're going to baptize them. Get them prepared. Oh, God, I don't want to preach. So these are things that I'm working on. You know, what can I do to shut some gateways that the enemy has tried to destroy my family, my grandbabies, you know, this ministry, my flesh? The devil is crazy. He really will work on ways that we open the gateway up. I just described the TV eating all that stuff and not paying attention. And so we've got to release the love of God. We've got to release the healing power and deliverance that God has put in our mouths and our powerful hands because he lives in us. And greater works we do have authority to do. We need to learn how to give encouragement and work on delivering power messages that don't just tickle the ears of the people, you know, and start to prepare them to learn how to shut the gates to be able to have the right type of atmosphere so that you won't have people up there praying that's looking like the flesh of the world, you know, fleshly, worldly dresses that cling to their bodies, things that show in the men's packages with tight blue jeans on, things that you know that they dress to those that they're trying to impress and not dressing to be able to get themselves in a place to worship God. It's about the flesh. It's about those people that they can draw their attention to their bodies. Lord, help. And so we need to look at who am I edifying? Who am I exhorting? Who am I sending comfort to? You know, are these people in this group, in your local congregation, in your outreach group, in your organization, are they doing good works or are they doing flesh works? Are they doing the works of the flesh or are they doing works of the kingdom? Lord, I don't want to preach. And so as the days begin to approach, as I would tell this Hebrews 10, 24, that we've got to come together and assemble together. Are the people coming to church? Are they not coming because of what they see? Oh, a bunch of churches are empty now because they're tired of the, the Hollywood and they're playing around. And so these gateways have caused the churches to be empty. The gateways have caused the church to people that don't want to stay. They may visit and be able They can discern anything of the world. That's why a whole lot of world people don't even come to the church because they believe I come to try to be changed. I come to try to be delivered. But when I get here, I see what I do outside Inside, I know I am talking to somebody. They treat me like my bros who get mad at me. They don't love me. They reject me in the church house. They got their nose up like I'm a stinking something in the church house. You know, they're looking at my tattoos. They're not looking at my heart. They're not looking at my brokenness. They're not looking at me that I want to repent, that I want to come to the altar. They're telling me to get to the back because I stink too bad. Lord, help us out. The preacher don't want to holler. So anyway... So here's some things we've got to look at. Are we walking in forgiveness? Are we walking in long-suffering? Is our lifestyle lining up against carnality? Are we continually seeking God for a fresh anointing from the Holy Spirit? These are all scriptures based on telling you. Look at Acts 10, 38. You want to know that about continually seeking. Acts 4, 31. Ephesians 5 and 18. You know, and are we growing in the Spirit according to Galatians 5, 22? Are we remaining free from all this hell and this gluttony and all these things, you know, that I talked about early on, from panic and fear and depression and weary and, you know, all these kind of things that we're letting, the, you know, the enemy come and feed us? You know, are we really, really free from fear of failure, fear of rejection? You know, are we really free from these things? You know, you know, and are we truly people of prayer and worship? Are we truly that? Are we enduring? Uh, the, you know, the, the fight of faith. Are we there? Are we really faithful and true to worship, you know, and warfare? You know, are we looking at our true strategies that we need to do for ourselves first? Because we can't pull and kill no devil, can't pull no hell down and kill no devils when we fight our own warfare within. Uh, okay, Daddy. So are we, are, we, are we really free? So, you know, let's look at a couple other things before I get off here. I want to share it. Let me look at my note here. Uh, and we got to understand that every believer, you know, I'm not trying to make it look like, you know, uh, you know, I'm so super spiritual, ain't nothing happening to me. I just gave you some real deals as far as I go, you know, what, what I like to do, just eat stuff I have no business. 
I know I gained at least 25 pounds in the past couple months, you know, but we got to look at carnality. We got to look at warfare. We got to look at worship. You know, I just told you, how in the world am I going to be? If we really keep it real, on the course of a day, for those who are really dealing with a whole lot of carnal things and carnal people, I already talked about that in my friend message. You got to make sure you look at who are you connected to and why. And so we got to make sure that, you know, your motives are in check. Every believer is going to be involved in some type of warfare every day, every day. And so we got to look at this case of carnality is very, very serious. You know, we're warring in our soulish realm, and right here on earth we're fighting all these uh, demonic forces, and the enemy is going to use every circumstance he possibly can, whether it's your family, your marriage, your finances, your body. He's going to use something to try to get you in a place where you will begin to say, I can't do it no more. It's not a carnal war we're fighting. It's spiritual. And in my last message, I want to close with this, is we've got to make sure that we look at are we truly exercising our authority as a believer? Are you really? Are you really commanding hell to go? I had to lay hands on myself and anoint myself and tell these spirits that was causing me to be derailed, for me to uh, think that I needed this, you know, and then I decided to agree with them and start eating. I already know that the Lord had already shown me this is here you go again with the stuff, you done brought the stuff in here, and then there you go again. And so here I am and, and, and saying, oh, well, well, I'll just eat it up and get rid of it. See, the enemy wants to make you believe you can just eat it up or just, you know, uh, just eat a couple of them and, and put it away. No, 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 no. I started just eating it and got sick because I wanted to. I wanted to eat it. See, this is a gateway. The enemy try to give us reasons to believe why we can justify why we need to do stuff, why we're justifying why we're angry, why we're justifying why I want to talk about my past, or justifying why I, I have a right to feel this way, what they did to me. Justify. You know, we want to use that. But do you have an authority? Are you uh, uh, speaking any authoritative words in this battle, in this warfare that you are facing? You know why you're not? Because it's a false positive gift. Because I believe that if your gift is truly, truly positive, if your gift is truly, truly anointed, if your gift is truly, truly in the spirit realm, then the carnal gates will be closed and heaven will open over you. And this part where you will begin to look at the fruit of the spirit will begin to overtake, will begin to transition you into the positive part of what God is wanting you to do. And that's walk in love, walk in what? Authority. And to make sure that you stay in the spirit realm because spiritual warfare is on every level. Okay? And we're not going to be able to get around it. We've got to make sure that the devil knows that we worship the Lord, our God. He is holy, and we serve him only and not our flesh. I hope this has helped you. And I want to close out, as I keep saying over and over again with this message, According to Isaiah 45 and 2, it says, I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. As we begin to uh, look at this warfare that we're facing and looking at the gateways that we've allowed to be opened by other people and other situations in our lives that we have allowed that we have allowed the access to come in because we don't want to rectify or reform uh, because we believe that we got it under control. and We don't want to, you know, hurt nobody's feeling. You know, we don't want to address the situation because we don't want to examine the fact that, you know, this is what I'm weak at and that I, too, have an issue and I need somebody to pray for me. Uh, that's lead the leader, iron sharpening iron. You need to get somebody to counsel you if you know you're being tested. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 that we need to examine ourselves to see whether you are in faith, you got to test yourself, or do you not realize this about your own self, that Jesus Christ is in us, greater as he is in us. Yes, he is. He's greater. But he can't do greatness in a weak vessel, in a gateway where there's carnality coming, swinging in and out. And so you got to pass the test. And so... The trumpet that I'm sounding tonight before I get off of here is that in order for us to do effective warfare, in order for us to have worship where Holy Spirit rests in every atmosphere where we're serving the Lord, 
you know, so that we can silence the works and the voice of the enemy. The sound of the trumpet in this last day. We've got to look at, look at the fact that we are a commanding army. And the church is in battle. And this battle is for the harvest for the kingdom. And so the heavenlies are there, but we've got to make sure that we fight for kingdom purposes and not for us to be common and carnal with those who are up close and personal or serving us. Spiritual warfare is truly needed today to be able to clear the heavenlies for this great harvest that God is waiting so desperately for us to be able to recognize that we've got to fight. We can't just keep laying and taking it down, laying down and taking it. And so in short, the church is called to make war in the heavenlies. And so our results are always going to be guaranteed. Why? Because Isaiah 45 and 8 just told us that he's going to let the heavens open. He's going to let the earth that is open wide and let salvation spring up and let righteousness grow with it. Why? If we just get prepared to look at what's really carnal in our lives and realize that we're not fighting flesh and wherever we're weak, we can confess that. And our God will hear us and he will forgive us and he will heal us and set us free. But we got to first come clean about what we've allowed carnality to swing in and in and out. First John 1, 9 tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And not just to forgive us, but he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not just some, all unrighteousness. And so tonight I pray that this message has blessed you. I thank you, Father, that even now as they begin to seek you, Father, you promised us that when we begin to knock on the doors of heaven, call out to you for whatever our needs are, whether we're weak or strong, that you would give us the increase according to our needs. And so we thank you that we can trust you for that. Your word tells us in Psalms 9 and 10 that those who know your name will trust in you. For you, God, you alone have never forsaken us who seek you. And so I thank you for that one that's listening even now, Father, that leader or that one that's going through, the leader that may be tested, that one that's going through who may be challenged with carnality or gateways that are secret in the carnal realm. I pray, God, that in Jesus' name that you begin to touch them, that you'll help them to realize that you can and you will give them what they need to bring them to become stronger in you. We thank you, according to Psalm 46 and 1, that you are our refuge and our strength and you are ever-present help in times of trouble. And so we thank you tonight that you are our God who will strengthen our hearts so that we will be blameless and that we will be holy in your presence. And so I thank you for it now, for that one that is listening, and for myself. In Jesus' name. Well, be sure to share the message. Looking forward to talking to you on the 11th. Talk to you soon.